Hello, this is Tim here, here with the final Hellraiser review for Hellraiser Revelations. I figured I might as well just go ahead and get this shit pile out of the way and be done with it. This will probably be the most unenthusiastic review in the history of reviews because this film is just horrible. So horrible. I can't even think up words to describe how much I hate this film. I, I truly can't. I'm so... <sighs> The last film was hard for me to make it through, but it was, like, so bad, at least it was kind of funny to watch. Uh, but the other film, Hell World is just bad. This film, I'll be honest, this film was easier for me, for me to make it through, but at the same time, it hurt me worse. This film was easier for me to make it through because of its more of a straightforward story, but at the same time, it, it was also easier for me to make it through because it was a joke. This whole film was a joke. I was laughing at this film the entire time. The whole film basically takes place in a house. That's pretty much it. A whole a fucking house. So this whole film takes place. Two fucking douchebag guys go out to Mexico. Uh, I think one of them's name's Nico. Another one's name's Steven. I'll just call them Dumbass 1 and Dumbass 2. Dumbass 1 is fucking a prostitute. And kills her. Uh, while they don't just leave and get, make it back across the Mexican border. I don't even think you can be tried for crimes you've committed in Mexico in the U.S. But what the fuck ever. Uh, uh, so they decide to stick around longer for some reason. Um, fucking Puzzle Guardian, I guess, shows up. And he just looks like some hobo with a beard. And he gives them the puzzle box. <laughs> they take the puzzle box. Uh, they open it. Shitty, horrible version of Pinhead shows up. And what I love about it is he's like... Uh, that. The guy, Nico, I guess is his name, is like, um, uh, who are you, or whatever, and he's like, trying to recite lines, like, similar to the spirit of the first film, and he's like, uh, the box, <laughs> you opened it, <laughs> it's like, it's like a, a high school kid trying to do, like, some kind of stage play version of Hellraiser, is what this movie feels like, like, when they show Hell, or whatever, like, what's supposed to be Hell, I guess, it's got, like, chains hanging around, and, like, Two skinless like chicks like making out or something like that in one brief scene. I think they were just felt. It just looks like a high school play. It looks like it was done on like a stage at the fucking by the drama club or something. I don't. I don't. It just looks so bad and so cheap looking. This film looks like so cheap. Looks like it had a budget of like a hundred dollars or something like that. But fucking. Uh, what I love is when Nico's like, just take the fucking box and go, and he's like, and uh, the guy's like trying. For, Fake, fake pinhead, I'll just call him fake, fuckface head, more like it, fuckface head, uh, he's like, he, he just goes, he just goes, no, <laughs> just like, most unenthusiastic, most unenthusiastic way he could say it, he's like, no, <laughs> that just cracked me up, uh, this film, I feel like, has almost sucked my soul from my body, it's so bad, I literally do feel like the life from my entire being is being drained out as I talk about this film, that's how horrible this film was. So, uh, Nico gets took to hell. Steven doesn't. Um, and then, Steven decides, since his, his buddy's gone, you know, why not go get a prostitute? And so he takes a prostitute back, and he's fucking her up the ass, and she, fucking, he can hear, like, uh, Nico calling to him from inside the puzzle box, or from hell, or whatever, through the box, and he takes the box and kills the prostitute with it by beating her in the head, Steven does, and both these characters are douchebags. Nico's the bigger douchebag, though, but whatever. Uh, so the prostitute's dead. Uh, and she's, like, laying there on the mattress dead. And somehow Nico can come back through that mattress, even though he didn't die on that mattress. But um, he can come back through it somehow. And he's, like, uh, he, when he comes out of it, he's, like, the effects in this film are so cheap. They use, like, a lot of cuts to make it seem like he's coming out of the, like, that he came out of the mattress when he really just is like laying on it and they just cut around it to make it look like he came out of it. But whatever. And he's like, the blood brought me this far. I need more. And he's like, it's like a cheap imitation of the first film. Like they're trying to redo a cheap imitation of the first film. That's what I'm saying. It's like a high school drama club trying to put together like a stage version of Hellraiser and trying to reenact it. It's what this movie feels like. And most of the, a lot of the movies like found footage, like fucking, the family of the two missing kids is like looking in a camera at like what happened to them and the incident and everything. And 
how, how they disappeared because apparently they've been gone for a while. How long, though, I don't know. I don't even remember them saying how long they've been gone, the two boys. Fucking one of them shows back up, Steven does, and you actually find out that he's not, it's actually Nico wearing his skin, and fucking Steven was bringing him like a prostitute or two or whatever, and he got some skin back, and then the last prostitute, Steven couldn't kill him because her, she had a baby, so, so Nico, skinless Nico, killed her, and then you, like, Steven's out of the room, and you hear the baby, like, crying, and all, once you hear the baby stop, I guess Nico killed the baby, but... I don't mind killing of kids and stuff like that in films if it's done in the right way and serves the story, but if it's just done in bad taste, I mean, because what point did he have to kill the baby? I mean, what did that serve anything at all? It's not like the baby's going to identify him or anything. So I'm like, no point in that, really. It's just to try to say, look how hardcore we are, but whatever. So Steven says, I'm going, I'm getting the fuck out of here and going home. Um, the guy... And the guy Nico is a huge dick. He like fucks around on his girlfriend, who is uh, like the sister of fucking uh, Stephen. And Stephen like sees him like fucking a prostitute too, the the one that he kills. And he knows that this guy's fucking around on his sister, but he doesn't even seem to give a shit. But whatever. So so he kills Stephen, takes his skin, and before Stephen dies, before skinless Stephen dies, he decides to like fucking open up the puzzle box. Okay. Why well, I don't know. He just decides to do it. So he decides to open it up. He gets took to hell and uh, worthless fuck face, shitty ass Ren high school actman of Pinhead <laughs> fucking turns him into pseudo Pinhead or whatever the fuck he's supposed to be. Wannabe Pinhead. <laughs> oh my god. It's, but anyway, why does Pinhead want a, a, a soldier that looks just like him? Or another Cenobite that looks identical to him? Was he like suffering from Massive ego or something? What the fuck? I don't know. And Cinnabite costumes look like they're from like a third grade high school play or something. Oh my god. No wonder Doug Bradley didn't want to do this movie. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Once I seen the budget of this film and read the script, I would say, literally, go fuck yourself to the studio. I would. I would seriously look at the studio and say, go fuck yourself. But... <clears throat> So, wannabe, uh, fucking Nico and Steven Skin, dumbass, is back there at the family's house, and fucking, uh, the, Nico's girlfriend, or whatever, or the one he was fucking around on, she's there, and she, like, has the box, and every time she touches it, she, like, gets horny for guys, or something like that, she, like, gets horny for this dude that's there, it's, like, Nico's dad, and she, like, gets horny for him when she touches the box, for some reason. I guess the box, I guess they're trying to say, like, the box brings out, like, your inner desires or hidden desires or whatever, or hidden lusts and things like that. I guess she's always wanted to fuck this guy. I don't know, you know. It never did that to anybody else in, in the entire franchise until now, so. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, it kind of comes out of nowhere. And then she's, like, giving her brother some soup, and they're like, well, who she thinks is her brother is really dumbass Nico. And fucking wearing, well, wearing Steven's skin. And she's getting in some soup and they're drinking some soup. And all at once they, like, start making out. And he starts, like, grabbing her tits and fucking filling her up and everything. And you're like, what the fuck? Uh, nobody else ever did this when they had the puzzle box. So why is she reacting this way and wanting to make out with her brother? Uh, <laughs> I don't know uh, why she's doing this. It makes no sense. Something that extreme for a character needs to be explained. Like, does she have these hidden desires, or they just brought out by the box, or is the box just, like, touching it naturally make you, like, a fuck, fucked in the head kind of person or something? I don't know. <laughs> or not. I mean, is it the box bringing out her hidden desires, or is this just, or is this, like, the box making her this way, like, giving her these kind of desires, or whatever, like, fucking her up? It never explains, by the way, um, even if that's the, even if it, she does have like a desire to like make out with her brother or whatever or something like that, you know, she is into that kind of shit, you know, explain it, you know, why is she into this kind of stuff? It just seems really generic and silly. Nobody's just gonna like jump into doing something like that, regardless of whether you feel it or not. Even if you are kind of fucked up like that, because she seems relatively normal, you know. <laughs> so you think she'd be like, you know, what the fuck all at once? <laughs> but whatever. Um, like I said, like I said, this film, after the, after the, all the found footage stuff that the family has watched, you know, about what happened to the two kids and how they got the puzzle box, some 
hobo wannabe puzzle guardian or whatever. Um, a fucking puzzle guardian shows up there and like for some reason the puzzle guardian shows up there. Why is he even there? I don't even know. He usually shows up to collect the puzzle after everything's over. For some reason he shows up here early. Why? I don't know. He just randomly shows up just to be there and Nico's dad like fucking shoots him and then he gets up and like cuts part of Nico's face off and then he just disappears and the puzzle guardian's gone for the entire rest of the fucking movie. Completely useless. <laughs> Whatever. So Nico's dad dies from that. Um fucking <laughs> Okay, Nico has like gotten rid of the transportation, I guess. Uh, like there, he's got rid of their vehicle and cut the phone lines, I think, or is it Pinhead that did it? But Pinhead shouldn't have power to do that. Pinhead can't do anything to the real world until the, he can't even interact with it unless the puzzle box is open. So how's he able to do anything to the real world? And Pinhead, like, making their vehicle disappear is kind of fucking stupid. And why does Nico even come back? I mean, why does he even go back home? Why? Why doesn't he, after he's got skin, why doesn't he just, like, get a vehicle and just fucking split town, just hit the road? Pinhead cannot come back after him unless he opens the box. So why don't he just fucking leave? What else is the point? <laughs> Whatever. Um, so he wants to get his ex girlfriend to open the box so he can like sacrifice her to Pinhead or trade her to Pinhead for himself so he can get away. Um, all he had to do was just never open the box again and just stay away from it. That's that's it, really. <laughs> but what the fuck ever. Uh, so you find out that like. Nico's mom was like fucking uh, his girlfriend's dad, which is mildly funny. Nico shoots uh, Stephen's dad, and he's fucking dying. And then uh, fucking you get a female chatter in this film with a really shitty costume. But uh, he he aggravates for a while and blabs some shit. And this this fucking like him holding them hostage with a hit with a shotgun goes on for fucking ever forever felt like it. This is like the whole movie takes place in this one fucking house just with him holding them hostage with a shotgun. And then you finally get to the point where she actually opens the puzzle box. Um, you get there and the pin, uh, fuck face dog shit head shows up. Almost call him Pinhead. Don't want to make a mistake. Uh, he's many names but he is not Pinhead. That honor goes to the Bradley. <laughs> not, not fuck face shit face head. But fuck face shit face dog shit come quiet head shows up. With Pseudo Dick Suck and uh, the other two, or whatever shitty ass looking Cenobites. Um, I love, I love how hell. I like when the Pinhead shows when pin when the Cenobites. I almost did it again. I almost fucking called him Pinhead again. <laughs> Fuck face dog shit head shows up and the Cenobites show up. I love how hell looks like like a fucking like a stage or like just a room like a cheap room dressed up with some uh, costume equipment or something or Halloween stuff. <laughs> but whatever, and uh, so Nick, uh, Nico's mom like uh, tells a uh, fuckface head that uh, that that Nico's ex girlfriend was forced to open the box by him, and chains shoot out and like rip her throat open, and she dies from that. And that's an okay scene. Um, fuckface shitface pseudo uh, dick suck head. Uh, actually, it would the actual Stephen who's now been turned into wannabe pinhead. Or Pinhead Jr. or whatever. Uh, for some reason he doesn't even give a shit about his family and just wants him to just wants to he just wants to torture him and everything too. You figured that he would remember his humanity or something like that, you know, and <laughs> turn back to normal, but he doesn't. Why? Well, I don't know. Whatever. And uh, Dick Dick Suck wannabe Pinhead number one is is talking to <laughs> the ex girlfriend and he's like. Uh, you will call on us when you are ready, when the desires of Earth or the desires of this world or whatever are no longer mean anything to you or something like that. <laughs> it's also forced just to get in a try to squeeze out that running time to get it to like movie length. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but, um, fucking. And he's got like a Nico chained up. He's uh, Nico still in Steven's skin. He gets chained up. And then fucking uh, the dad who was shot by Nico uh, fucking shoots him with a shotgun and kills Nico. And he's like, nobody gets to kill you, you little fuck but me. <laughs> I thought that was funny. And then fuckface, shitface, wannabe pinhead number one looks at the dad and says, uh, uh, the lifetime of torture that we would have gave him or the eternity of torture would have been vengeance enough for you, would have been more than vengeance enough for you. Um, so you basically just uh, 
cost us a victim. So in retaliation, we're going to take your wife. So they take it. <laughs> they take they take his wife, and that's pretty much it. And that's the fucking in it's pretty almost the end of the movie. They take his wife, and then bam, boom, uh, everything goes back to normal, and he dies. The father does, and then the daughter is just like just randomly walks over to the box and uh, picks it up. You know, it's like two seconds later. It's like I guess well knowing that three seconds of seeing how shitty you know hell looked and what happened to everybody and everything and people getting chains up their ass. I guess seeing all that you know has made you like horny to want to go to hell in like two two fucking seconds. Uh, so she just automatically goes over and gets the box after the dad's dead and just picks it up and like turns and looks at the camera like <laughs> I'm like. I don't consider this movie canon. I don't consider this movie canon to the franchise. I don't. I truly don't. This is nothing more than cheap cash-in. That's all it is. This was made by Dimension Films deliberately on a shoot fucking less than shoestring budget for the sole fact so they could retain so they could retain the rights to the franchise because they want to do a remake. That's the only reason this film exists. So they can fucking do a remake. So they can keep the rights. So they can do a remake that is the same thing with Chewing the Corn, Genesis, or whatever the f whatever it's called. That way they could keep the rights to that franchise so they could do a remake of it sometime. So they, su they succeeded. They kept the rights. They threw this movie together in like five days so they could keep the rights. Oh my god. I can't believe this film exists. It hurts me to watch Hellraiser 1 and then go to this and end the franchise with this. Hellworld killed the franchise. This movie puts the nails in the coffin. This does it. This kills it. Franchise is dead. <laughs> I, hope, I know there's eventually going to be another film, whether it be a remake or another sequel. Uh, for the love of God, get Doug Bradley back, please. Please. Just, I beg you, studio. Dimension, if you're watching or if you listen to anything, get Doug Bradley back. I beg you, please. Please. But I can understand if he doesn't want to come back. Because if it's another script similar to this one, then I don't blame him for saying fuck you and not wanting to do it. I seriously don't blame him. <sighs> this movie is garbage. It's it's a joke. This movie is a joke. When I was watching this film, it was easier for me to get through than Hell World. Just because this film is just such a joke. I didn't take it seriously. Not one second I was watching it. It's a zero star film after possible four. A zero. I think I've only awarded two zeros in my entire like all these reviews I've done for all these franchises I've done, this is only this is the second zero I've ever rewarded to a film. This film is just a joke. It is. It's a painful joke. It's like if me and a few of my buddies got together and wanted to make like a cheap fan Hellraiser film. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, if me and my buddies did one, it would be better. It would be better. I love Hellraiser the franchise, and I love the idea. It's a cool idea. Oh, and another thing, fucking, uh, so the dad shoots Nico and kills him, and the uh, fuck-faced dog shit wannabe pinhead number one, like, whines about it. Wouldn't the guy, after he dies, goes to hell? Wouldn't he go to hell anyway? So, what? But, I know that the, some people think that maybe the hell and Hellraiser is like a different hell than the regular hell or afterlife or whatever that you might go to. But, I'm pretty sure they call it hell or say hell, and... In all the films, even the Cenobites in most of the films say it's hell, I believe, or call it hell. So it's got to be hell or some version of hell. Um, basically, what we have here is a filmmaker with a different opinion. So that's why this ending makes no sense. And what the pseudo fuck, I mean, not pseudo, but what fuckface wannabe pinhead number one says makes no sense because the director of this film had a different idea that it should be like an alternate, you know, universe or whatever. Something like that. Either way, it's still fucking stupid regardless. I mean, even if you want to go by that, that it's like a not the same afterlife that you do go to when you die. Even if you want to go by that, the film still sucks. It still sucks. It sucks big ones. It sucks hard. It's hard big ones. This film... <laughs> this film is the equivalent of trying to watch Hellraiser... Like having Hellraiser 1 playing uh, while you're sitting on the couch... And then have, and then have like the this, and then have like this a copy of this film sitting on like the desk and it coming to life and like butt fucking you and raping you, 
while while like, raping you well raping you up the ass, I mean to say, while the while the regular or the original film I mean is playing on TV. That's about what like getting raped while this getting raped, I would say, while the original film is on is probably the equivalent to how horrible this film is. I mean of course, you know, really the film's not as bad as getting raped, obviously, but you know, this film is is still a joke. I mean, in all seriousness, this film is a joke. It's a travesty. It's trash. I don't recommend buying it. I'm a completist. I buy every sequel. Every sequel. But I wouldn't buy this. I wouldn't, and I won't. I refuse to buy this. I will never watch this film again. I will never watch this film again. Not ever. Never. Again. Not once. Never. I will never, my eyes will never lay on this motherfucker again. I recommend, if you're a Hellraiser fan, don't watch this film. If you're a horror movie fan, don't watch this film. If you're a movie fan, don't watch this film. To wrap up my final thoughts for the Hellraiser franchise, Hellraiser 1, four stars, good mo uh, really good movie. Uh, only thing weak about it is a little weak effects at the end. Hellraiser 2, uh, three stars, uh, good movie. Um... Not as good as the first one. Uh, still got the little weak effects at the end. Uh, plus, it's missing Andrew Robinson, and it really needed him in the story. Hellraiser 3, okay movie. A uh, little decent movie, two and a half. It's a popcorn movie. Hellraiser Bloodline, complete dog shit. Alan Smithy, dog shit. Uh, studio raped that movie to hell and back. Uh, Hellraiser Inferno, uh, good movie, three stars. Uh, good change uh, up for the franchise with an, adding in another style. Uh, but still, the story could have used a little bit more like of a Hellraiser feel to it. It feels un it feels un Hellraiserish at a lot of times in it, in the story or in the film. I mean, it could use some more Hellraiser elements put back into it. Hellraiser Hellseeker, um, decent movie, all right movie. Uh, feels too much like a rip off of the last one though. Um, but it's nice to see Kirsty back again at least. Uh, but it's an all right movie. It just feels like a rip off and a retread of the last movie. Once again, once you get to the point where you're just trying to do the same thing as the last film or almost the same thing as the last film style wise, you know that you know you're running out of steam. You know your franchise is running out of steam. Still an all right movie. And Rick Boda does a good job directing. Hellraiser Debtor, only an okay film. Uh, two stars, like a passable two stars. Only an okay film. No, it wasn't meant to be a Hellraiser at first, a Hellraiser film at first, and they rewrote it and threw in a lot of Hellraiser elements, and you can tell they're all for all the Hellraiser elements are really forced in the script. It does feel more like a Hellraiser film than five and six, but at the same time, uh, as a film, it's not that good. The Hellraiser elements still don't when they're meshed with this script that was never meant to be a Hellraiser film. It makes a lot of plot holes in the story, so it's just a passable two stars, just an. A barely okay, just a barely okay film. Not a bad movie, but just a barely okay film. Um, I like Carrie Woolver in the movie though. She's pretty, good. she's good. I like her. Um, Hellraiser Hellworld, a bad movie. One star, a bad movie. But it still seemed like Rick Boda in that film was trying to do something for the fans and trying to do something fun and was actually trying to make something for the Hellraiser franchise. And he does seem to care about the franchise. After seeing this film, I hope to God he comes back if they make another sequel. I hope to God he comes back if they make another sequel after seeing this film. I really do. Uh, Hellraiser Revelations, a joke. Made on less than a shoestring budget. Looked like a budget of like $5. Made for the sole purpose by Dimension Films to keep the rights to this franchise so they can do a remake. So they can do a remake. The sim is worthless. It's atrocious. It's If Freddy Krueger was to give someone a nightmare, this would be it. This this I mean if Freddy, Freddy if you're a Hellraiser fan and Freddy Krueger is gonna give you a nightmare of like the worst possible Hellraiser film this this is it I don't think it can get much worse than this I honestly don't I, I, I just can't see it getting worse than this I really can't this film is just such a joke and such an atro abomination this film is an abomination to this franchise it is most of these films I have enjoyed really I like I've enjoyed Hellraiser one I enjoyed Hellraiser two. I enjoyed Hellraiser 3. It's like a popcorn movie. You know, popcorn pinhead movie. Despite its faults and the shitty Cinnabites, I still enjoyed it. Hellraiser Bloodline, I didn't enjoy that one. I did not enjoy that one. It's not a good film. It's only like a barely, barely scraping by a passable film. Uh, Hellraiser Inferno, I enjoyed that one. Hellraiser Hellseeker, even though it's only alright Hellseeker was, I still, 
I still can watch it and have a, a little fun. Have, have a, some fun with it. Uh, Hellraiser Deader. Uh, I don't really like that one, but I don't hate it. I can watch it and just be like, oh, well, you know, it's over. Uh, Hellraiser Hellworld. I don't like it. I can't stand it. Um, well, I can stand it. Compared to this one now, I can stand Hellraiser Hellworld. Uh, but I still don't like it. Hellraiser, Hell, uh, Hellraiser, fucking, I mean, Hellraiser, I mean, Hellraiser Revelations. Um, I'm never gonna watch again. Never again. This film is, this, <laughs> this film is worse than the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. I hated the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. I did. But at least it had a budget. At least it had a budget. And maybe one or two actors that could actually act a little bit. This film is worse. Worse than the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. You don't have Doug Bradley back as Pinhead. Doug Bradley is Pinhead. End of story. I'm sure there's another actor that could play him. But it sure in the fuck is not this guy. It is not this guy. Doug Bradley has been Pinhead in every fucking movie. And that's uh, really helped the continuity of the franchise and made me feel like it's one big, you know, continuing franchise. Right here, this film, non canine as far as I'm concerned. As far as I'm fucking, you know, as far as I'm, this film is non canine to me. As far as I'm concerned, non canine Fucking non canine Non-existent. When someone asks me how many Hellraiser or films there are, I'm going to name them off all the way to Hell World and then bam, stop. Fuck this movie. And if they make another sequel with Doug Bradley back in it, or if they do the Hellraiser remake with Doug Bradley in it, then then I'm gonna give that film fucking this film place. And then when someone asks me how many Hellraiser films there are, I'm gonna say nine, uh, counting whichever one they make after this one, as long as it's got Doug Bradley in it. And hope to God it's not a sequel to this. Um, <laughs> if they had to do a film without Doug Bradley, because I know he said no, I don't blame him for saying no, but they had to do one without him. Just use a different Cenobite. I know you gotta use Pinhead. For to sell the movie or whatever the fuck, I know that, but I, I guarantee that the fans would have had more respect for you, me included. I would have had more respect if you would have used a different Cenobot, maybe a completely new made-up Cenobot, maybe have one of the guys get turned into a Cenobot and he becomes like a, a no a new a completely new Cenobot, you know, a complete new character for the franchise. Could have been something different, and you could like. Teamed him up with regular, you know, Doug Bradley Pinhead, you know, in another installment later or something. Once you got Doug Bradley back, I mean, if you did, you could have done that. I would have liked that better than what we got. Just because you see this guy trying to play Pinhead, and it's like a high school kid or like some dude in college trying to put on some kind of Pinhead imitation for a high school play is how bad it is. Seriously. And the set looks like it's like fucking been decorated with like... Halloween for stuff from a Halloween store, like on a stage or something, or in a random room. Like they just came into my room right here and just threw some shit all over it and painted the walls and stuff. That's about how bad this movie looks. I hate this film. Um, I will never watch this film again, once again. Zero star film. Um, but to just end this, I really do like the Hellraiser franchise, but I hate this movie. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Hate isn't even a strong enough word. Uh, but I'll see you guys again with the next franchise I'm going to review. Uh, I don't know what it'll be, but hopefully the, whatever movie, I, whatever franchise it is, the, hopefully the, uh, the movie I start out with will, will, will be better than this film at least, because after this, I'm looking for something to, to watch that I'll enjoy, to lift my spirit back up after this film has almost killed it. So I'll see you guys again with the next franchise I'm going to review. And I hope you have a good day and avoid this film like the motherfucking plague.